Hello transport nerds and welcome back to Talking Planning. In my last episode, I checked out a Volvo B10MA at Hills Bus, which is a high floor bendy bus. And during that episode, I talked about accessibility a fair bit. And I thought today, I'd better explain why briefly and do so while checking out one of the most interesting new designs on the market, the custom denning element. New Year's Eve was the deadline for a new target in the disability standards for accessible public transport. Essentially, that target aims for public transport infrastructure and vehicles, with the exception of trains and trams, to be fully accessible. I don't think we quite got there, but high floor buses are now very much a rarity, although there is still some way to go when it comes to stops and stations being compliant. I'll have the legislation for that change linked below for those of you who are looking for some light reading after this episode. During my recent trip to Sydney, I also caught a few high floors, including that Volvo B10MA, but I thought that this bus would be an excellent juxtaposition and timely look at what best practice looks like today. I've been waiting to jump on board one of these for ages as the Element is Custom Denning's locally built and developed electric bus and this was my first chance to catch one. I've checked out a fair few electric buses already but those have either been on BYD chassis or built by Utong. Both of those companies have a lot of experience with building electric buses and have been happily adopted by many operators globally. As I know though by reading your comments, or pretty much any Bus Australia forum post, many transport enthusiasts are very passionate about Aussie vehicle designs and local manufacturing, which is great, although some people can take that a little too far. So how well does the Aussie built element handle the streets of Western Sydney with busways? In terms of the interior, this reminds me a lot more of a European low floor bus, and that's a good thing. For starters, it has a proper low floor layout, unlike the low entry designs which are dominant in the Aussie market. Electric bus platforms are more flexible and batteries and electric motors are easier to move around than a conventional engine and gearbox system. So I do find it surprising that the full low floor design hasn't featured on more Australian electric buses. Fixtures and fittings are much more typical of a standard Aussie route bus. You'll probably recognise these bench seats, these stop bells, the handrails and more from other custom coaches products. But somehow in this package it just feels a little more futuristic. There are some neat touches including a passenger information display for route updates and grab handles for the back seats and the seats above the wheels. Custom Denning make a pretty big deal about sourcing solid state batteries which don't contain nickel or cobalt and are easier to recycle with less environmental impact. Many of the driveline components are from ZF, a well-known and trusted provider, which means that sourcing spares shouldn't be too much of a hassle down the line. In terms of specs, the motor is sourced from Actia and has 250 kilowatts or 335 horsepower which is pretty comparable to most standard route service buses. However, the torque's more impressive at 3,000 newt meters, which is more than double what most diesel city buses have. Six batteries provide a combined 378 kilowatt hours, and there's a claim range of roughly 300 kilometers. So let's see what that sounds like in service.
my journey was on board A770 for about half an hour, so that gave me a good chance to see how the vehicle handles various conditions, from slow moving urban streets, to hill climbing and winding through housing estates. In summary, the Element handles it really well. The torque is quite noticeable, and if combined with an enthusiastic driver, results in sliding around on the seats. So I'm glad that these have a moquette fabric rather than the vinyl that many previous busways vehicles have had. It's hardly gonna offer the sort of G-forces you'll expect as an F1 driver, but for standing passengers, you have been warned, hold on tight. I've been wanting to check out an element way sooner, but after my March 2022 trip to Sydney, where I just missed getting one with state transit on rail replacement, they seem to disappear off any trip for a few months. If anyone has any more insight into why that might have been, it would be helpful, as for me it's a real grey area for a product which I've overall found excellent. So now that we're almost at the end of our journey, it's time to press that stop bell and get ready to jump off the bus at Penrith Station. Thanks for joining me and I will see you again soon.